Week five of the college football season in the rear view mirror. Where does the college football playoff race currently stand right now? These are playoff picture rankings. These are not predictions. These are not projections. This is currently how we see the landscape when it comes to the college football playoff race. This is not necessarily the, uh, the field, if you will, but more so a rankings of where things currently stand. So make sure you're subscribed to the On3 YouTube channel. If you're a college football sicko, you're tired of the hot takes, you're tired of the clickbait, you're tired of traffic for traffic's sake from other YouTube operations, totally understand. Not dunking on anybody, but I'll just say uh, this is college football sicko content by college football sickos for college football sickos, right? So we appreciate y'all being locked in. Make sure you're subscribed and make sure you're following me, Instagram, Twitter, at JD Pacquiao. Want to hear from y'all there. So for us, we start with our 12th seed with the G5 rep, okay? So it's not necessarily the 12th best team in America. I would love to put my Cornell Big Red in here, FCS, uh, potentially FCS power here going forward. Absolutely beating the brakes off Yale yesterday. Love to see that online accredited school from Connecticut. Good for them. However, we're going to put UNLV at 12. Y'all, is UNLV as the G5 rep America's team? Feels that way because all week long, it's the Matthew Sluka, the NIL deals, the just all this conversation in a negative way around UNLV. Quarterback leaves them. Say what you want about the situation. Did not have the starting quarterback. Uh, no problem. Haj Malik Williams. Says, my, 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 my turn, Michael Scott style, beat the brakes off Fresno State. 59-14, to 14, they host Syracuse this Friday now in Vegas. Now, Boise State, they have a, a resume that they'll submit to be one of those teams that ends up making the college football playoff and be the G5 rep, and we'll have a chance to see UNLV play them down the line here. But UNLV, I'm just telling you, of the resilience, I'm rooting for them. Full transparency. I'm rooting for UNLV because of the way they have responded and endured some of the adversity here. And number 11, they're not dead. They are the walking dead in some ways. They are not dead. Michigan at 11 for me. That Texas loss is tough, but like, I mean, one loss is one loss. A 10-2 and two Michigan team, they are in the dance. That USC team, uh, that USC win rather jolted some life into Michigan. Alex Orgy. Threw for 86 yards, no problem. Beat Minnesota, uh, Ohio State, and Oregon. The big ticket items left for Michigan at Illinois. Also probably a resident booster if you can win that game. 10-2 and two is the magic number. I still think Michigan probably has to find a way to generate a pass game just to keep a defense honest, but you do not apologize for winning. And uh, Michigan, a dub yesterday over Minnesota. To me, they're number 11 right now in our playoff picture rankings. At number 10, I got Clemson. 40-piece. 40-piece over Stanford. Y'all, don't look now. That offense looking good. It was a fire fest kind of vibe a year ago because you got a great OC and you got a five-star quarterback. And you're like, why can't we generate some explosivity? They're doing it right now. And so if that's the Clemson offense we're going to get, I trust that defense. That's still a Clemson brand defense. Look out for Clemson. I think they've made a case and they've had some... Uh, some other teams lose as college football just works that way. Some other teams lose ahead of them that I think Clemson has a case to be a top 10 team right now in college football. So say what you want about that. Missouri, they were off this past week. Some carnage is, is boosting them up these rankings. I cannot wait to see them play against a more appealing logo in Texas A&M. It's going to be on the road. Great tests for that defense and all the, the new pieces on that side of the football. How does this offense look? Do they elevate their play? against a better, again, logo, outfit situation, all that. Because you saw them play good enough to win against Vanderbilt and Boston College, but still it's like if that's the same Missouri team we see against a and it's going to be a loss. So Missouri, top 10 right now in our playoff picture rankings. Excited to see them against a and Get some more validation from them. Number eight, I got Oregon. Hey, man, starting to look like that team that we thought they would be going into the season. Kind of caught their tempo a little bit. Beat Oregon State. Had a bye week. Beat UCLA last night. Zero sacks for Dylan Gabriel. 34 points. They're trending the right way moving into October. At number seven, I got Miami. Was it sloppy against Vatek? Sure. They find a way to get a win on Freaky Friday over Vatek? Absolutely. And you don't apologize for that. Cam Ward has to take better care of the football with the three turnovers. But I'll tell you this, man. The psychopathic nature 
of him at quarterback and the difference maker he is for Miami. That's something you've been missing at Miami, man. The attitude he brings, the I don't care what's going on, I don't care how many turnovers I have, I'm going to keep balling, I'm going to keep doing my thing, I believe in myself. This team now starting to embody that. The Dr. Pepper chest pass from him was ridiculous. The fact he did it in the game is even more ridiculous. Miami's still unbeaten. Still unbeaten. And if they're able to patch up those mistakes that they had in that game and move forward here, Miami's going to be a wagon and will be in contention, not just for the college football playoff, but for a national title. There, I said it. Penn State shooting up these rankings, man. Quality win over a top 20 Illinois team just further legitimizes who they are in my eyes. Offense didn't score 50. Still, though, ran for over 200. Big dub is a big dub. You got UCLA, then you're at USC. That's going to be a really good test for the firepower for this new Penn State offense under Colton Necky. Going toe-to-toe with Lincoln Riley outfit. Can you score with them? If you can, I think Penn State uh, very quickly becomes a team that moves into the discussion of can they compete for a Big Ten title? Kind of a refreshing encouraging narrative around Happy Valley. And uh, yeah, that game against USC at USC is going to tell us a lot. Tennessee, just got to sit back this weekend on a bye week and watch some chaos ensue. Ole Miss goes down. Uh, Intriguing game this week at Arkansas. Nico has got to keep progressing at quarterback. That defense has got to bring it. Dynamic quarterback against Taylor Green. They're limping into that game. But like, if they do what they're doing, and they continue to build on what they've done. The, the win over Oklahoma, I think, should generate a lot of confidence and belief. Uh, they're going to give anyone and everyone problems. For me, Tennessee, number five in our playoff picture rankings this week. Georgia, there are four this week. A lot of people say, oh, but they lost to Bama. They looked so bad in the first half. They played two quarters of football and were in position to win that football game. All right, so... You can fault them for the bad half, or you can look at what they were in the second half and say, okay, that's a really good outfit. Count out Kirby Smart if you want to. Still, I think the best coach in college football as of right now has two national titles to show for it. They have some get rights, in theory at least. They got Auburn and the Mississippi State, and then they're at Texas. Blessing and a curse, okay? The the curse is you got to play Texas, all right? Like, that's just, it's tough. I mean, Texas is really, really good. Um, The blessing, though, you beat Texas, make a statement, restabilize any optics that maybe aren't stable going into that game, coming out of that game. Nobody's questioning Georgia. Georgia number four right now. Do not believe the overreactions that Georgia's dead and that Kirby Smart's this and that. Georgia's fine. Okay, Georgia's fine. I would be, I mean, wildly surprised if they're not still in the college football playoff when it's all said and done. Ohio State at three. Hey, man, no news is good news. Defense is as advertised. I still think they're holding some things back schematically defensively and offensively, made light work of Michigan State, had to show some urgency in that first half to get it back on track. But like the big thing with me, man, they have a number one running back in Quinshawn Judkins and a number one running back in Travion Henderson, a number one wide receiver in Emeka Ibuka, and a number one wide receiver in Jeremiah Smith. They're so multiple with how they can hurt you offensively. If Will Howard can make the plays and be the guy in those clutch moments now, Those moments where it's like, hey, got to have it. I mean, roster talent becomes a lot more even between the two. Can Will Howard be the difference? If he can now, it's going to serve them well. That's going to make them a national title contender, as we already believe they are right now. October is going to tell us a lot about who this team is. Most notably, the game at Oregon, October 12th. Now, at number two, I have Texas. This is no knock on Texas. I'll talk more about the number one team here in a second. But, like, this is a ship that is still cruising, even with no Quinn Ewers. Big opportunity after the bye week with Oklahoma and Georgia. Texas, if you think the number one team in America, we're going to get to see it here pretty soon. Before we get to number one, I don't have a Big 12 team in our playoff picture rankings. Obviously, a Big 12 team will be represented in the college football playoff discussion, in the college football playoff period with the automatic bye. To me right now, though, in these picture rankings, I would have them outside the top 11. Kansas State is the team I'd put into this discussion. We're talking about an automatic buy for the Big 12, but right now I think all these teams are superior outside of the G5 with UNLV uh, to a Big 12 team. So the, the path remains the same as we thought it was going into the season. A Big 12 champ is the only Big 12 team getting in, in my opinion. Now at number one, Alabama, man. The best win in America last night over Georgia. 28-0, man. Like, Kalen DeBoer 
All the questions of can he handle Tuscaloosa and the spotlight and the impact and following the GOAT, like he had that Bama team ready to play. He was dialed in from a game plan perspective. He has elevated everyone on that roster. He has elevated Jalen Milrow. Ryan Williams is stepping in as a 17-year-old and getting buckets. Like, this is a defense, too, that showed their teeth last night. Took some lumps, sure. You know, on the back end, sure. Found a way to get it done, man. Found a way to get it done. Do not question what Georgia is. Instead, I think look at what Bama is and say, okay, if they trend up from week five going forward here with Jalen Milrow, what he is the tone setter for this football team, like Alabama... To me right now, it is hard to make a case against them being the best team in college football. So to recap it for you here, our number 12 team, our G5 rep, UNLV, America's team. Michigan at 11. Clemson at 10. That offense showing some juice now. Encouraged if you're a Clemson fan. Missouri at 9. Big test against A&M. Coming up. Uh, Oregon at 8. Miami at 7. Penn State at 6. Shooting up the rankings after the Illinois win. Tennessee at 5. Georgia at 4. Don't sleep on Georgia now. Don't count them out. Ohio State at three, Texas at two, and Alabama at one. Again, no Big 12 team in our playoff picture rankings this week. There will obviously be a Big 12 team represented in the college football playoff with the automatic uh, bid and the buy they will have. So let us know what you think about these playoff picture rankings, what you would tweak, what you would add. Appreciate y'all being dialed in. Appreciate you being subscribed. Let me know what you would tweak and change here on my social channels, at J.D. Paquel, Instagram, and Twitter. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all. College football is the greatest sport on the face of the planet Earth, and we appreciate y'all enjoying it with us. We're going to keep this party rolling. We will see y'all next time.